Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, I'm going to talk about the top 5 trash unit civilizations. Now, if you don't know, trash units are an Age of Empires term that doesn't mean trashy or garbage. It simply means they're military units that don't cost any gold. Usually that refers to a set of three units that you ultimately have to rely on making a lot of if you don't have access to trade, like in a one verse one game. Now I've done a few top five civilization lists before, but this is probably the most subjective of any ranking I've done, since it comes down to how to balance the three types of trash units. There are also a lot of contenders that are hard to sort that might be good in one area, but have a weakness in another. But I do want to take a firm stand on a top five. In making this list, I'm really after which civilizations are in the best position to thrive when gold runs low. So let's check it out. Starting off at number five is the Byzantines. Now I know some people out there are going to say this is their number one. They have a 25% discount on halberdiers and skirmishers on top of access to the Hazar. Now normally I'm all about discount bonuses and a 25% discount actually translates to 33% more units for the same cost. You could certainly argue that offsets missing the last attack upgrade for their halberdier and Hazar as well as missing bloodlines. Trash fights also tend to be a slow grind, and having 40% more HP on all of your barracks, ranges, and stables you're creating means it's just that much slower for your opponent to make progress. The reason I don't put them higher though is I'm not as sold on discount bonuses for trash in particular, simply because population efficiency is often the number one concern in the super late game like this. If you and your opponent are both fully boomed and at 200 population, the person making headway will often be the one that has less unit turnover. Both the Byzantine, Halberdier, and Hazar lose in one-on-one -on -one matchups against many other civilizations. Cost efficiency puts them in the top 5, but in this case for me the lack of unit quality meant it wasn't enough to move them higher. Next up at number 4 is the Spanish. Now they're a bit unique for being the only civilization with all three trash units being fully upgraded, but that's not all they have going for them. After Supremacy, their villagers are especially resilient to raiding by taking more hits than usual, and even being able to hold their own against halberdiers. Another advantage that's easy to forget is their blacksmith techs don't cost gold, meaning as you transition into a trash fight, you don't have to stress about not being able to afford your upgrades, or having to sell a bunch of wood and food at the market. It's easy to take all of the upgrades as a given when talking about this stage of the game, but if you haven't been making archery range units for example, it's a lot of resources to make that tech switch if you wait until you're almost completely out of gold. Just the Hazar and Halberdier upgrades together are a combined 1200 gold. Being able to save at least on the blacksmith gold cost takes away at least some of that pressure. The reason for them not being higher is mostly because although they have access to all of the trash units fully upgraded, there's no one overpowered standout which they can make the backbone of their late game army. For that we need to look at my number 3, the Magyars. They're carried in the late game by their unique unit, the elite Magyar Hazar. Their base cost normally includes 10 gold, but after their unique unit mercenaries they lose the gold cost, meaning they fit the description of a trash unit. They're a higher HP and attack form of the normal Hazar, making them a more expensive but population efficient version. Like I mentioned with the Byzantines, low unit turnover can be really important since it means you're able to keep your momentum when everyone's at their population limit. They also have an attack bonus against siege. Often in trash battles you do a bit of selling food and wood at the market to buy the odd siege unit, either mixing in a few rams or trebuchets to take out buildings, or an onager to thin out groups of enemy units. Magyar Hazar's 8 extra damage against siege help them pick off those very expensive and critical units. Their main weakness is that they require castles to create, which is a big stone investment to build and repair. But at the end of the day they actually have a discount on their stable Hazars as well, which are nearly as good at raiding and chasing down skirmishers. They also have a bonus for free melee attack upgrades at the blacksmith, which helps in a similar way to the Spanish blacksmith discount. Ultimately, what kept them out of the top 2 was missing the last infantry armor upgrade. If your opponent is going for mass halberdier, it's hard to make progress with cavalry, and the Magyar's own halberdiers will often lose ground to those other civilizations. As overwhelming as their cavalry push can be, the fact that a few halberdier civilizations can easily withstand it means this is as high as I can comfortably put them. To be top 2, a civilization really needs essentially no answer to its late game. So what civilizations have something like that? Well, at number 2 we have the Malay. To be fair, there are a few things right away not to like here. There's no Hazar, and in fact they only get the first armor upgrade on their light cavalry. 
They don't even have a bonus for their skirmishers or halberdiers. So what's the catch? Well, it all comes down to their unique tech, Forced Levy, which makes their swordsman line cost 65 food instead of the usual 60 food and 20 gold. When you think about counter units to trash units, champions are always in that discussion. So it is very powerful to spam a go-to trash killer with nothing but food. Now true, they aren't actually champions since Malay only get access up to two-handed swordsmen, but they're still great in trash fights. Let's check out why. First of all, compared to a halberdier, they have one more pierce armor. They also don't take bonus damage from skirmishers, meaning they often end up receiving a third the damage that halberdiers do. While skirmishers are typically a soft counter unit to late game halberdiers, against two-handed swordsmen they're on the back foot. Even when matched up directly against enemy halberdiers, the two-handed swordsmen have six more attack, letting them easily win with equal numbers. Against Hazars, remember you still have access to the halberdier, but the two-handed swordsmen can do reasonably well in that matchup anyway. The fact you're able to focus your economy almost exclusively on a single resource, in this case food, also gives its own benefit of making you much less reliant on refreshing lumber camps and controlling wood lines. Simply set up your infinite fish traps or 80 farmers and just flood the map with two-handed swordsmen. They even have a bonus against buildings, reducing your need to incorporate siege. Now before we get to number one, I have a few honorable mentions of civilizations I strongly considered including, but just didn't quite make it. The first is the Berbers. They have both cheaper Hazars and also give their team access to a mounted skirmisher, the Genitour. Technically the only thing they're missing is the Halberdier upgrade, but for me that's kind of a big one. It's not so much about the extra 5 HP and 2 attack, but for the increased damage it does against cavalry. Even without it, Berbers are above average in trash games for sure, but that's too big of a weakness to be in the top 5. Another is the Vietnamese, who I'd put in a similar category with their Imperial Skirmishers. Combined with extra HP for Skirmishers already, it's a formidable unit, especially when massed. Unfortunately, they miss Blast Furnace and the Hazar upgrade, meaning however good their Skirmishers are, they're fundamentally flawed and too one-dimensional for me in trash battles overall. Third was a bit more of a contender, and that's the Slavs. First, they have their unique tech, Trezina, letting them damage adjacent units whenever they attack. That makes their halberdiers the best in the game in really tightly packed battles. They also have cheaper siege, meaning those few critical siege units I mentioned earlier are easier to sneak out. They also have their faster farming bonus, letting them get away with fewer villagers and more trash units as a result. Unfortunately, they're missing Bracer and Thumbring on their skirmishers, which was just a bit too much of a weakness for me. There were also a couple of new definitive addition civilizations I considered, but was a little too afraid of nerfs in the near future to really commit to the list. The first of those is the Bulgarians. They're missing the Archer Ring armor tech, but their Hazars attack 33% faster. If that bonus doesn't change, they'd be on a top 5 Hazar list for sure, and even hold up well against the elite Magyar Hazar. I also considered the Lithuanians, who have a big edge in the late game. First of all, their skirmishers and halberdiers are 10% faster. They also have a unique tech for one extra pierce armor on those units, though they're missing a blacksmith tech, leaving their halberdiers a bit worse off. With their original bonus of light cavalry gaining plus one attack from each relic, they would probably have been a top three. But as it is, a bit of speed being traded for some halberdier armor just doesn't stand out quite enough. There's probably another 10 that could be mentioned here, including my beloved Japanese, but for me the others are just above average and not top tier. So which is the best? Well, my number one trash unit civilization is the Persians. Before definitive edition, this would have been a fringe honorable mention, but that completely changed with their new unique tech, making their crossbows cost 50 wood. They may be missing Bracer, but for what it's worth, I'd still take it over the Vietnamese Imperial Skirmisher. Maybe I'm a sucker for gold units becoming trash units through unique techs, but to me they're just a better alternative to skirmishers against anything besides archers. The crossbow's extra to attack, much faster firing rate, and lack of minimum range mean they deal with halberdiers and other infantry just fine, while performing much better against hazars. Even if they can't quite cut it on their own, you still have fully upgraded halberdiers and hazars to mix into your army as well. When gold runs out, there's really no other civilization I'd rather have. But those are my top 5 trash units. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.